What's up everybody, my name is TradeX, this is my trading den, and today we're going to cover yesterday's price action, which was FOMC, right? So we're going to get straight into the meat and potatoes, we're going to get straight into the good stuff, and we're going to start in the AM session, okay? I'm going to keep this video nice, short, and sweet, so you can guys can get maximum value. So for those of you who have been watching my videos previously, you will have known that I've been looking at this SIBI on the one hour since pretty much Friday last week as the draw on liquidity. Why? Because above this candle here, we had a massive pool of liquidity in the form of stops sitting above a reclaimed order block. So price for me was going to drive up into that to reclaim those, right? Because everyone who was accumulating longs, i.e. market makers, down here are going to want to go and sell their position into those stops which are set up here. What stops? Buy stops. So selling into buy stops. Market match. Bingo, right? There's also another retained order block up here. So if you actually go back into this week, I'm not going to go through it today because I did do other videos on it during this week, right? So if you go back to sort of my Monday the 6th review or um, my Monday, uh, sorry, Tuesday the 7th review, you'll see it all in that. But in these on the one minute chart, there is reclaimed order blocks set above these, okay? Both here and here. And what is that going to deliver? Ah. Uh, I can't swear, but a lot, <laughs> a lot of liquidity. So for me, my, my draw has always been here. And I called out um, live inside Red Pill that I believed ahead of FOMC they were going to keep us inside this city. Why? Because it's no man's land and you wouldn't know which price, uh, which way price was going to run, which is perfect for market makers, okay? Causing max confusion, which generally leads to max pain, all right? So I was calling out to everyone before FOMC, they're going to keep us in this range. And honestly, it couldn't have worked out any better. It was literally a bottom tick and a top tick of the range ahead of FOMC. What was that range? We had a SIBI here to note on the one hour. Okay, so this price leg, it currently it sat just around equilibrium of that range. Okay, so that was the low for me. I didn't really want to see it run deeper if I was expecting price to expand higher. Why? Because we'd spent so long in accumulation that we were in the distribution phase, so I was expecting price to push on into that higher time, that higher premium, in order to fulfill its objective, which was selling into premium and selling into this liquidity. Okay, I've just noticed my webcam, webcam, my webcam has died, so apologies for that. We're just gonna, you have to ride shotgun with me, but without the webcam, all right? Um, and when price is aggressively reaching towards the target, it's not going to give people a chance to get back in. So it's not going to always run down to a deep discount in order to push hot, push on higher. That's why I believed we would stay within this range for a run up into that area. And we got it, right? Now, if we jump down into the lower time frames and we go to that piece of price action, you can see that this was the SIBI on the hourly. Now, what happened? They didn't quite fill it. So for me, in the back of my mind, I was always thinking, that is left unfilled, right? It's left unfilled. And if it is left unfilled, there's a chance price is gonna come back at a later date to completely rebalance that inefficiency. Why? Because price is only doing one of two things. Searching for liquidity above buy stops or sell stops, or going to rebalance an inefficiency. This hourly SIBI was an inefficiency which hadn't been fully rebalanced, okay? now. Price uh, ran up to this level here, which was 75% um, of this hourly wick before dropping back. Um, but this is all ahead of FMC, right? So trading super, super lightly, being sniper in your entries and exits. As always, guys, if you want to see the trades I took, head over to my Twitter. You can see them all there. Uh, but I did take a few trades for FMC and I did really quite well with it. But um, you can see price ran up here. And this was the range I was talking about, the range ahead of FMC. And what did it top tick? got right up to the top of that SIBI on the hourly and it rejected. What was it targeting? It was coming all the way back down to refill that SIBI, okay? This was all pre-FMC. Our boy Jerome Powell hadn't even spoken yet and we were getting this price action in between this range, exactly how we had anticipated. Now, if we jump into the so FMC price action, it was probably one of the easiest, cleanest days to trade. You know, FMC is usually an absolute beast to, and a monster to trade, but I find it actually quite easy to read. Um, and the reason being is that we had a high time objective, which was quite clear and obvious. Okay, we had up here was that SIBI on the one hour. So we had this one here. Okay, we had this SIBI, which needs to rebalance. And this is why was this my draw? Because we had that reclaimed order block. Okay, so uh, they'd already tagged one, which was above here. 
this 12 p.m. candle on the 7th of March, but there was another one set up here. So I was anticipating price to draw up there to clean out that liquidity. Now, price, before Jerome Powell had spoken, right? Before Jerome Powell had spoken, let's get the right piece of price action, had run up to almost, it failed this SIBI, but it didn't reach up into this SIBI. So this price objective for me was left unfilled. Okay, so the entry was waiting for price to return back into the OTE zone of this leg for price to then run higher. So if I switch this out into my FibFib, you can see how price ran back into the OT zone and that it was your opportunity to run price higher into that SIBI in a deeper premium, right? In a deeper premium up here, okay? And what did that coincide with? It coincided with 75% of this wick on the daily. And as we know, wicks are gaps and they work in quadrants, 25%, 50%, 75%. So draw 75% across your chart, and that is double confluence, right? So you're not only 75% of this wick, right? Which is a, uh, <coughs> sorry, my, my voice is going. But you also had this uh, SIBI on the hourly, which is where that reclaimed order block liquidity was. And there was your confluence as to why you could potentially look to go short here, okay? Now price fell back. At this, at this point, Prow hadn't even spoken still. He still, he still hadn't said anything. He literally still hadn't said anything. Uh, it was crazy. But anyway, price ran back, and this is where it fulfilled that SIBI again, came back, bottom ticked it again. If we jump onto uh, this chart, you can see it was respecting these RTH levels, um, which was Wednesdays. Wednesdays at the uh, 22nd of March. That's right. So um, price ran up for when Jerome started speaking, ran back up there, cleaned out that liquidity. And at this point, it had filled its objective, right? It had taken that liquidity. So where were you now looking? It had already rebalanced the inefficiency. It had already taken the buy side above this level here at 40.64. Where was price likely to draw to? It was likely to draw back lower. I actually had a bias that we might run up into 82. So I didn't take the fade, right? I didn't take the fade, but I can see it. I could see it as clear as day for me. Okay, you can see it as clear as day for me. So let's break it down. You had the classic 2022 model, right? So if you, if you go across to here, this is where the buy cycle sat. And so if you actually look on your hourly chart, it was this level up here. Okay, so this is where the liquidity was sat above that buy side. And we also had that inefficiency here, and then there was a reclaimed order block just above that. So price purged it, and then ran lower, and then we got the what? We got the market structure shift, which was a break of that hourly SIBI, all right, on the hourly. So if we drop, zoom this in, so it was this, Hourly SIBI, if you're cool. Now all we're doing is looking for price to return into what? Into a premium to take a short, okay? And what did it run into? It ran into exactly, exactly that 62% level, okay, of the OT zone, and that could have been your short. Um, if you didn't take that entry, you could have waited for the mid block to form. So you had the high, the low, the failed swing high. This this candle here is your mid block. So if we draw, if we draw that out briefly, Right, you have your mitigation block here, so you could have shorted that. If you didn't get that entry, these SIBIs, they act as support and resistance. You'll often hear me call them uh, lines in the sand. And so you could have taken an entry here as well, okay? So they, there were your entries. You really could have got in here. That was your, uh, that was uh, trade number one, trade number two, trade number three. Uh, I didn't take it. I honestly, I didn't take it. I had a feeling price might want to run up, up into, um, and clear out these highs. I felt it might want to run up there and run into this volume imbalance on the daily. Okay, so I decided to keep my cards close to my check. I'd already taken a really nice couple of trades uh, during FOMC and before, so I had no need to, to trade it. But if you did trade it, it was an amazing, amazing trade. Um, and what was uh, price ultimately reaching for? Okay, what was price ultimately reaching for? What could, could have given, what target could you have been uh, going for on the short side here? So if we jump into the new weekly open gap chart, we can uh, switch this to RTH hours, which is already on. And if we look at Monday, this Monday gap here had never been refilled. And so this was an inefficiency which needed to be rebalanced. And you can see during Tuesday, we came back into it almost to equilibrium, but we never completely filled that gap. And so as soon as price uh, failed this level, your target would, could have been down here at 40.85, sorry, uh, 39.85, sorry, to come and refill this RTH gap 
ultimately what did it draw back into it came all the way back down to that new weekly open gap um, which is QI right it's QI What's interesting, a little thing to know, uh, I'll, I'll leave you a little bit of secret sauce for getting to the end of this video. Look how it bounced off the Friday closes. Every time it runs down, look how it bounced off the Friday closes. So there's a little bit of secret sauce in there. You might want to go and start researching yourself. Um, but that is going to cover it. That is everything today. If you want to go check out my trades, please head over to Twitter. Or if you want to drop into Red Pill, I look forward to seeing you on the other side. But as always, guys, trade safe, trade smart. And if you did like this video, please do consider smashing that like and subscribe. See you until next time. Trade safe. Bye now.